Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to this brief update on Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow, as you might know, is the upcoming RTS game. Uh, it is the brainchild between Wargame Red Dragon and World in Conflict. And you can play it really quite soon, because it is going to be available during the Steam Next Fest. That's going to be February 6th through February 12th, so that's Monday through Sunday. Um, how big the download is, I don't know. We'll just have to wait for that in Steam. They are going to be part of this next fest. How much is going to be available? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, consisting one playable scenario. I hope there's going to be a bit more. But uh, if even if it's just one scenario, it allows you to check out the game and see whether it's any good. Don't base your entire opinion on it, of course, because this is just a demo. This is not the full game. Now, what they also shown is the Motostrelki Battle Group specialization, and I am really interested in this one. It's um, it's a motorized slash mechanized group focusing heavily on infantry, and especially seeing as I am mostly a motorized player in War Game Red Dragon, that really really suits me. So, what do they have? Um, mostly ground mobility aims to achieve superiority rather through numbers than quality. So you're going to be going quantity of infantry over quality of infantry. Doesn't mean, of course, that you don't have some really good units. Again, I don't know stats, so we're just going to go through the update and see what we have. Um, what I really liked was <laughs> this description. Offensively, this specialization allows you to deploy a large quantity of cheap infantry units equipped with older weapons and spread them rapidly over the battlefield with light wheeled transports, BTR. Um, reminds you of any nation currently engaged in a war? You know, some big red nation. Um, each squad and its transport might be outclassed if they encounter a stronger enemy, but some BTRs might find undefended routes to approach or routes of approach. So this is definitely the motorized playstyle. Punch enough holes in the enemy line or probe enough, and you might actually find a weak spot that will allow you to pour with a couple of units right through and start murdering artillery in anti-air which will then allow your helicopters to potentially punch a bigger hole in the front line and you can continue with more infantry. Now, when it comes to their units, um, they have announced a couple of them. Rozvetka, you got your, your five-man recon squad, better observation than standard. Uh, they got a stealthier SVD marksman rifle, equipped with RPG, access to BTRs and MTLBs, uh, but also BMP. Interesting. So you can have your recon infantry in a BMP. You also got the snipery, uh, an entire squad. I'm not sure how big this squad is going to be. Equipped with precision rifles of different calibers. This has me interested. Does this mean that we're also going to see anti-vehicle weaponry on these squads? That could be really, really nice to see. Now, an anti-vehicle um, sniper rifle, anti-material rifle, is of course not going to be very useful against a tank. So against armor, you're probably going to have to rely on the stealth value of these guys and make sure that they don't have to uh, engage vehicles like that. Because while, for example, Spetsnaz Gru might have top tier rocket launchers, these guys do not. So if you push them against a tank, you'll probably run into trouble. The Spetsnaz Gru shouldn't have problems with that. Elite seven men squad with suppressed weapons, advanced observation equipment and top tier rocket launchers. So, this sounds like a very much elite unit. Um, what I also found very interesting is that they can provide laser designation for planes and artillery. I wonder if this is going to mean that, like war game, they're going to be capable of getting a corrected shot for artillery. So, your RD and potentially your bombing runs are going to be more accurate. Or uh, if you can call in a laser designated bomb from one of your aircraft. I'm not sure how that's going to work but I hope to find out in the demo next week. In addition to these infantry units, the specialization gives you access to the BRDM-2 and 3, the wheeled recon vehicles, as well as the four-post UAV. So we got drones in this game, and these drones hit hard with two Coronet anti-tank missiles. Your standard infantry is going to be Modus Trelki, seven-man squad, AKM, uh, underbell grenade launchers. Very interesting. Uh, again, I'm going to compare it to War Game because that's the game I've played the most. You don't get under barrel grenade launchers at all. You do get the grenade launcher um, as the ones in the AGS squad. But having them on an infantry squad as well as a machine gun and an RPG-7 could make for some fairly potent squads. I don't know how well trained these guys are going to be because it seems to be quantity over quality. Reservisti are going to be even worse. Uh, six men, RPG, 
and um, BTR80 or MTLB. Could be probing units though. Could be useful for defending some uh, cheap or well cheaply defending a flank or something like that. AGS squad, grenade launcher group, very uh, probably quite small. Extremely vulnerable to helicopters. You cannot push this thing upwards and start hitting a helicopter with a grenade launcher, apparently. Whereas uh, this particular text is not part of the other descriptions. So perhaps Modestrelki and the Reservisti could be used against these guys. You really want to make sure that your helicopters go down. You bring the Igla Squad Conquerors team for AGGMs, SPG-9 with a recoilless rifle, fire support against vehicles and infantry. But they lack the power to really damage a tank's frontal armor. Mostly there probably to uh, panic, maybe stun lock enemy infantry so that perhaps your grenadier groups can take them out and your Modestrelki will be able to take out a vehicle. Something like that is what I'm imagining. You also got Engineer Sturmoviki. Heavily armored soldiers. Interesting. Does that mean that they have more survivability? More hit points? Uh, can they take bigger caliber hits without dying? I'm really curious to see how this is going to work in Broken Arrow. Specialized in explosives that will clear buildings from enemy presence in no time. Yeah, but how do you get to the building? If this is a smaller squad, uh, even if they are more heavily armored, I'm not even sure if they're going to make it to that building. But perhaps if you throw enough smoke around it and blind said building, maybe the engineers can do some work for you. Now all of the above are going to be in the BTR-80 as well as uh, these BTR-80s that can be upgraded. That's a feature of this game. You can change this in your deck, if you will, or armory or whatever they're going to call it, to the BTR-82A with a 30mm autocannon or the BTR-82AT with a remotely controlled turret and two AGGMs. So that's nice. And you can even add cage armor to improve protection against RPGs at the expense of amphibious cap. So already with this little paragraph, you can see that you're gonna have quite a lot of customization options which will heavily impact your playstyle. But then again, maybe uh, if you get, for example, four, let's say cards of these guys, you could decide that you want to have two cards with the uh, amphibious capability and two with the cage armor so that you're going to be capable of dealing with any threat. MTLB available to all troops. It's lightly armored. It's basically a box with tracks. Armed with only a single machine gun. Can be upgraded, however, with a KPVT or 30mm roller cannon. So it's a box with tracks and a gun, but you can upgrade that to a bigger gun. BMP2. Probably um, the main... BMP that you're going to be using. Available to all troops except HGMs. These guys believe that the HGM comes on the BMP, so yeah, why bring an anti-tank team in an HG or in a BMP? You can upgrade them with better optics. This is something else that I find very interesting because, again, war game comparison, um, you got recon units doing recon things, uh, spotting stuff for your other units. And while some decks give you a BMP recon vehicle, being able to upgrade your standard line BMPs with better optics is going to give them a lot more capability, probably at the expense of pricing. The BMP-3, next generation IFV with a 100mm low pressure gun, 30mm autocannon and most likely also an AGGM. You can upgrade them. Um, actually, the turret can be upgraded with better optics and Stora Jammer. So jamming is a thing. Or totally replaced with the Epoca turret with a 57mm autocannon. And a Bulat, a Cornet and Bulat ATGMs. So they potentially fire two different ones. The armor can be upgraded with ERA. That substantially improves the resilience against explosive damage. Fighting vehicles, um, not necessarily in line as you see them. You got the Concourse anti-tank vehicle with five AGGMs mounted on the roof of a BMP, uh, sorry, BRDM2 chassis. So based on what I'm seeing here, it's probably this guy in the back. You got uh, the 9P162 Cornet anti-tank vehicle based on the BMP3 chassis with two AGGMs, most likely this one. Can be upgraded to the Chrysanthema with better optics and missiles. And how about this? It can be guided to two different targets independently. You got one IFV or one fighting vehicle that can target two tanks and potentially blow them both up at the same time. 
that is probably going to be an expensive upgrade. T-62M, oldest Soviet tank, um, doesn't mean it's useless. It is going to be in multiple variants with additional op armor, optics, and with or without HGGMs. I mean, an outdated tank can still be useful on the battlefield if the enemy doesn't have too many anti-tank capabilities. Because if uh, one of those sniper squads, for example, runs into a T-62M, well, good luck. They're probably not going to be able to do anything beyond just try and not be seen. T-72B, also upgradable with armor of different generations of ERA, fire control systems. So again, they might use the basic model of the T-72B, but you're not stuck strictly using the T-72B. So that's an upgrade. Supports, quite a lot. Um, you got a lot of mobile platforms here. Quite a bit of it is wheeled, unless you're talking heavier artillery. So we got the Nona, BTR platform with 120 millimeter mortar, um, lower loadout with only 30 rounds. So it might be able to shoot and scoot, but you won't be shooting and scooting very much. You got the MTLB-based mortars uh, in, the configuration, in the configuration called DEVA, 82 millimeter, so substantially smaller, but rapid bursts of four rounds of 120 millimeter mortar after you upgrade it to the Vasilek. The 2S4 Tulpan with a 240, uh, the Akatsia with a 152. But if that is all not to your liking, then how about the Smirch? 300 millimeter rockets with multiple possible warhead types. So, would you like HE? Would you like Cluster? It's going to be interesting. But the rockets must be loaded one by one with a crane after shooting. So your reload is going to be really, really long. Uh, we got the TOS-2 uh, Tosochka, one of the newest equipment available to motorized infantry. Wheeled MLRS 18 220mm thermobaric rockets. It's not quite the Buratino, but it's probably going to have the same effect. You got the 23-2 uh, and the 23-4, so uh, either two barrels or four barrels. You got the OSA AKM and you got the S350E Vityaz. Truck-mounted SAM capable of dealing with planes. 12 ready-to-fire missiles. Um, I'm not sure we can see it here. Is it this one? Maybe. Not sure. Helos. Uh, this is basically asking what kind of a variant of the MI-24 would you like? You got the MI-24P, the VP, and the K. Uh, six pylons are available to equip the classic gun pods and rockets, but also Cocon ATGMs and R60 anti-air missiles. So again, with a helicopter, it's a pick-your-own-adventure story, and you can decide what sort of armament you would like on this helo. The MI-8 workhorse um, can carry a mix of troops and supplies. Yes, you can airlift your supplies to troops, as well as gun pods and rockets. So again, uh, you might have, I don't know, two auto cannons and then stash some infantry inside or make it a full semi gunship with gun pods and rockets. We'll just have to see. My 24V slash VP, similar but with a chin turret instead of a fixed gun. The M24P 24 p has to rotate the whole helo. This thing just rotates the turret. The turrets are armed with either a 12.7 millimeter minigun or an auto cannon. So you get the V or the VP. And then the K is the recon bird, uh, loses its ability to carry troops because observation equipment takes space in the compartment. No HGMs because the aiming system has been replaced by, again, there it is again, laser designation. Finally, planes, um, SU-25s and SU-24s. SU-25SM, rather slow ground attack plane. Unguided bombs, um, all sorts of different types. This is probably going to make quite a bit of difference in your play style. And I am really curious to see what sort of balancing is going to be done here. Because I fear that we might see one of these weapon types be just an overall better choice than everything else. I really hope that they're able to balance this out properly. And make all of these loadouts feasible. Um, depending on the rest of your deck, your battle group, your task force, whatever they're going to call it. You can also equip... Um, Rockets. This is just the unguided bombs, right? This is just the unguided bombs. You've got rockets, 340 millimeter S25. You got anti-tank missiles, bigger anti-tank missiles, or ARM. So you got um, seed operations going on. Out of ten pylons, two can be equipped with electronic countermeasure pods. 
increase the survivability of the plane. So basically ECM. And um, I'd say this is probably going to be a good trade-off. You might have a little bit less firepower, but your chances of getting in and out alive could be really good. I do wonder if this is going to mean that you're going to be able to build an SU-25 seed aircraft. Just equip two pylons with ECM and a couple of ARMs. And then if you have another card, for example, that I would pick with maybe the S-25. So the big rocket pods, uh, maybe some anti-tank missiles. So first you swoop in with your ATGM, sorry, with your seed variant. And then comes the ATGM slash uh, ground attacker. That could be nice. Could be a good combo. SG-24M2, supersonic bomber, variable sweep wings. And I do wonder, are we going to see that? Will that be modeled? Would you prefer quantity with up to 26 100 kilogram bombs or three 1500s? Up to you. How big does your explosion need to be? The MP, equipped with additional electronic sensors, dedicated suppression of enemy air defense. So you got a designated seed aircraft. But if I'm reading this and interpreting this correctly, you can also build your own with an SG-25. MiG-29 SMT light fighter, designed to engage enemy aircraft with short range R-60 and R-73s, and medium range R-77 and R-27ER. Uh, and the numbers, number it can carry is low. I suppose this is part of this description of the aircraft. And autonomy is short, even with additional fuel tanks, so it's best used to intercept rather than air patrol. So this thing swoops in, kills something and gets out, as opposed to, uh, let's say, something like a, a Tomcat in war game that just loiters around the battlefield waiting for something to show up. So that is it for the update. I'm really looking forward to playing this next week, and I'll definitely make some content on that. Um, I think it's shaping up to look really, really good. I like the system that they have in place or that they're building for customization. And I would definitely invite that you also check out the demo. Just wishlist it on Steam and you should automatically get a demo um, or an update on the demo or something like that. Just hit the, the wishlist or the follow button. All right, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, I am probably not the right person to ask, but post them down below and I'll forward this video to the devs so that they might be able to answer some of your questions. Thanks for watching. I hope you thought it was interesting and I'll see you soon for more.